Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, welcome everyone. I'm just always so pleased to be with you on these episodes of Jim and Java. I always enjoy addressing your questions and digging deep into the area of development, fundraising, nonprofit management, and helping you to grow this community, increase income, and become fully funded. And this is a busy time of the year for many of us. I know that if you are doing events this is an extremely busy time april is the most popular month to do dinners and uh, may following and then uh, october and november are the next two most popular months so i hope things are going well for your planning uh, i'd like to jump right in today because we've got a question for today that deals a lot with events and event planning so let's dive right in to our first question our question today is from Dawn in Dallas, Texas, and Dawn asks, how important is audio video to the success of an event? Well, Dawn, thanks again for this question. I've had this come up many times over the years in working with dinners, and I just thought it was a great question to be able to address at this point in time. I'll tell you that there are so many factors in a dinner that make or break an event. I always say that a game changer for any event is the recruitment of table hosts. The last thing that any organization wants is a terrific program that nobody sees. So recruiting of table hosts is so important. And then presenting a meaningful and compelling challenge and opportunity for people to give is also extremely important but i'll tell you an area that is greatly overlooked in any strategy is the audio video of an event if you are going to share with people your compelling message and your mission and vision you've got to be able to in this day and age sell that message in a very creative manner and we we're in a society right now where attention to detail and stimulating content is extremely important. Many of us have, uh, have big screen TVs in our homes nowadays, and we uh, either play video games ourselves, watch our kids play video games. Uh, we are connected to each other through iPhones, iPads, and uh, other um, electronic devices. So a visual stimulation for us at this point in time is very important. But also we have to remember that our attention span is very small. I used to be able to do videos in the 1980s and 1990s that would be 10, 12 minutes long. That went down to eight minutes, then down to five minutes. And now I'm fortunate if I can keep someone's attention for three minutes or less. But all that to say is that we are motivated and stimulated by visual communication and making sure that if you are going to be presenting your case for support to someone, you've got to make sure that you're doing that in a compelling manner. And the two things that are so important is the audio and the video or visual component of an event. If an, if a, audience comes to an event and can't hear what the speaker is saying it's either too soft or or un or they're unable to hear what you're saying it's not audible then you have got a problem i always jokingly say that if it sounds like you are at a drive through at jack in the box and people are saying well i'm glad that you're here for this event today it sounds very much like you're going through a drive through with a terrible speaker system and nothing will lose people's attention and distract them more than a than a terrible audio system and i can't tell you how many events that i've been to over the years that terrible audio is just accepted the idea is that 
an organization will go to a venue, even an extremely popular or prominent venue. Uh, I have done a number of events over the years at the Yale Club in New York City. The Yale Club is a, a prestigious private club and it is a very popular location downtown for individuals to have events and especially nonprofits. Well, I can't tell you how often I have had events there where people have tried to use the house system and it, they just cannot get good audio from that system. And I have been to some of the best venues in the in not only the United States, but in the world and found them to have some of the worst audio. Or if they aren't bad in their audio for speaking, they're bad for video or musical entertainment. And that's an important element for me to address. Oftentimes when venues purchase systems, they will purchase systems that are built in the walls and they will mostly be created and purchased for speakers. But they don't factor into the equation that many of those organizations are gonna have singers or other live entertainment or are gonna have videos. And frankly, the speaker systems that I've found in house systems tend to be woefully inadequate in the area of live presentation and in video presentations. And nowadays, I very rarely do any event where I'm not doing at least two, if not three, of those components in the event. So you have to make sure that my recommendation is that you have an external sound system, one that is made for speaking, for video, for video and for live entertainment. And those speakers should be outside the wall and should be completely separate. So even though it's gonna cost you a little bit more money, I would recommend that you spend the money to get a good sound system. Nothing is gonna detract from the quality of your event more than a poor sound system. On the other hand, you need to also make sure that you've got good video equipment. I have used video projectors and screens for decades. And one of the elements that has changed and improved over the years is what's referred to as lumens. That's the brightness of your projector. And there are a lot of projectors that will do well when the lights are completely turned down. But when you hope to do a combination with a PowerPoint presentation, you can't have a speaker up there be expected to see the speaker and a PowerPoint at the same time and have a low level light. You'll want higher level lights for the overhead, but you'll also want projectors that are not gonna wash, be washed out by the lights around the room. So you're gonna want as high a lumens as you can afford. My recommendation is that you start with at least 6,000 lumens. Anything beyond that will really be a great benefit to you, 10,000, 12,000, 20,000. But know this, every thousand dollars, your lumens continue to go up in price. And so 6,000 is still gonna cost you a good amount of money. 10 will cost you more, 12 even more, 20 significantly more. So you need to weigh the positives and negatives, but my recommendation is that you start with at least 6,000 lumens. I have just found that having a good projector and the, the rule of thumb generally for me has been that I will use one projector for uh, every 350 people. So if I'm going to have less than 350 people, I'm using one projector. If I move to 350 or more people, I'm going to move to a second projector. And of course, then you decide, do you want front projection, which will take up space in the front, but generally be more clear? Or do you want rear projection, which will allow you to bring your tables, stage, and everything closer to those screens, but tends to be washed out a little bit more? So you're going to have to look at some of those components within that. Then the other element that you want to look at is, do you want the image of the speaker projected on the screen? 
If so, you're going to need a camera referred to as an iMag, and that will be much like a camera, something like that I'm using here now, but we'll be able to pick up the image of the speaker and project it onto the screen. And if you've got multiple projectors, that means you need a switcher that will switch that image and split the image between the two speaker between the two screens that you have. And generally, I am going to recommend at about 400 or 450, I'm going to recommend that you use an iMac and project the image on the screen because when you start to get 400 or 450 people or more, it's going to be very hard for your um, guests to see your speaker. They're going to see the person but not make out the characteristics in their face. And honestly, when you're trying to make a, a compassionate plea with people, you want to be able to see people's faces. You want to be able to see if I'm concerned or I'm frustrated or even if I'm sad and there may be a tear in my eye as I'm communicating a message. I want to be able to see those things because I need the audience to connect with me or the speaker. And having an image that you can make out a face versus something that's so far away you can't make out a face is, is going to be very negative for your event. So I strongly recommend that you invest the money. And it could cost you $1,200, $1,400, $2,000, $2,500 or more to get good screens, good projectors, good external speakers, a soundboard. You're going to need, and I always recommend getting techs, individuals who are going to be able to help you run that system through the evening and they also need to be able to understand your program and when to switch from a speaker to a video a video to a live presentation and then back to the speaker again they need to understand your presentation so those kinds of things are going to be so important but they're going to cost you money to do that now can you save some money by getting those materials donated absolutely and in fact almost 100 percent of the time I am not going to use the equipment from a venue because generally there's a markup with that equipment and it will mean that you're going to be paying more because the venue also gets a kickback on the prices. So if I'm going to get equipment, I generally get it outside from an outside vendor or if I can even save a little bit more and get a church or other, a donor or partner who is connected with the organization, to, to donate the equipment and those services. That is such a better option than having to pay full price. But just know that audiovisual will cost you money, but this is one area, and I mention often, the term, is the juice worth the squeeze? This is one area where you don't want to cut back so much that, as I said, once again, it sounds like you're at a jack-in-the-box drive through You do not want to skimp on your sound or your video. It is going to be so important that people come and after you've done all your work to pack out the room for people to come and not be able to hear a speaker, a video, or a singer is just a waste of time and money. So Don, I hope that helped answer your question. I do believe that audiovisual is very important to your success of your program and I hope that helped you. I hope that some of you will comment down below in the comment section. Let me know whether you use audiovisual, whether you use an outside person, whether audiovisual is important to you, or if you've had some bad experiences. Share that with this community. We learn a lot from each other, and I hope that you'll be able to share that. If you've got any questions, go out to Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. Please be sure to subscribe because we're building this large community making a difference in our world and in eternity. And also, we want you to connect up with me through Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. We've got our Wednesday fundraising and film, our Monday uh, three tips for development success, and on Thursday, I've got my two-minute video on coffee and tips for meeting with Jim on Thursday, and uh, we've gotten great feedback on that as well. 
So thanks a lot for joining us this week. As I always say, we will strive to increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Watch this next video and we'll see you next time in our next video. Take care.